It is part of a larger waterway, the Inside Passage, one of the world's most famous navigation routes, more than 40,000 kilometers of rugged, sheltered coastline, stretching from Alaska all the way to Washington State. While Discovery Passage is just a small stretch of this waterway, it has played a key role in maintaining this maritime highway. Navigation here has not always been safe. A jagged underwater obstacle known as Ripple Rock once blocked Seymour Narrows, the narrowest portion of this channel. It would take one of the largest explosions in human history to make this waterway safe for mariners once and for all. Seymour Narrows is the main waterway for vessels going by Campbell River on their way to uh, Prince Rupert in Alaska. In Seymour Narrows, it's noted for the fast rising tides and the turbulent gaping whirlpools. In Seymour Narrows, there is a mountain under the water with steep sides, irregular shaped, and it has two pinnacles. And that was the hazard in Seymour Narrows for these ships. From British Columbia's earliest days, the rock was wrecking vessels and a lot of lives were lost. Pretty close to 50 ships were wrecked or sunk there and uh, about 100 lives. Some of the vessels that went down, everyone drowned. Some just got holes ripped in them, and as people escaped, some of them would get away with their life. There was pressure put on the Canadian government to try to get rid of this hazardous rock. It was first proposed in 1931, but nothing happened till about 1943 and 1945. They planned to drill into the top of the rock from a barge that was anchored directly over the two pinnacles. Now this project cost about $1 million and it was not successful. And at this time is when the crew boat got caught in the whirlpool and nine lives were lost. Nothing happened until 1955. That's when the engineers in the federal government come up with another plan. So this plan was to go to nearby Maud Island and sink a shaft, and that would be about the height of a 50-story building. And then the tunnel was driven 7,000 feet and then they went up into the two pinnacles. The drillers were experienced hard rock miners, and they took about two and a half years to put 1,200 feet of tunnels in the rock pinnacles. Once they had those tunnels all drilled out, they put in 1,300 tons of 
special high explosive. In April 1958, everything was set up, and on the day to set off the explosion, they had a special underground bunker where the uh, television crews and uh, officials from our Canadian government were able to watch the explosion when it went off. And it happened uh, at 9.30 in the morning, just when the tide was right. When that explosion was set off, it was the largest man-made non-nuclear peacetime explosion. It blew about two acres of rock off those twin pinnacles. It took uh, 70 feet off the north pinnacle and 45 off the uh, southern pinnacle. This explosion that blew off those twin peaks was a success. Now the rock is not a hazard to the marine traffic. It's not going to tear the bottom out of the boat. So I think that mariners are quite pleased that that rock got moved.